Hi, I'm Reggie and welcome to Read Tech. Uh, today I'm going to be creating a VPN gateway uh, based on a Raspberry Pi 4 as the hardware platform. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. In an effort to ensure that this video isn't 30 or 40 minutes long, I've gone ahead and installed all of the packages and actually done the uh, majority of the configuration that's going to be necessary in order to create a Raspberry Pi VPN gateway. So the uh, the first thing, if you're starting from scratch, you're going to need to install uh, Raspbian. And right now I have Raspbian version 10. Um, as you can see here, it's a uh, version 10 Buster. Um, so that's already installed. Uh, we're good to go there. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is install OpenVPN. So we can see here if I do a D package, actually. List out the packages and we will grep for OpenVPN. And we see that we've got the OpenVPN package already installed. Um, it's version 2.4.7. Another way to uh, to verify your version is to actually run OpenVPN with the version command, and you can see that we also, you know, it shows there basically verifying that we have. Uh, OpenVPN version 2.4.7. So let's clear this and we can move on to um, setting up the wireless access point. So the wireless access point um, is using the host APD um, daemon. Uh, it basically turns the Raspberry Pi Four's um, wireless interface, um, instead of being a Wi-Fi client, it becomes uh, something that actually serves Wi-Fi, um, including having its own uh, SSID. So um, that needs to be installed as well. So we can also look for the host APD package, um, which again, I've already installed. So I can go back up and do my same D package and actually grep for host APD. And we see that that is also installed, uh, version 2.7. Um, then we do a, uh, we can take a look at the configuration file. That configuration file lives in Etsy host apd, host apd .conf. Um, Interesting things here to make note of. The country code, uh, make sure it matches the country that you're in. Um, the uh, default interface for Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi 4 is WLAN 0. Um, I'm using uh, an SSID of readtech-sec. Um, this is also interesting, hardware mode. So hardware mode equals A means that it's going to use 5 gigahertz um, as a uh, the RF frequency that uh, the Wi-Fi is going to use. It's much faster than um, 2.4 gigahertz. Um, generally because the spectrum is not as crowded because 5 gigahertz doesn't travel as far. So basically I'm not competing as much with my neighbor's um, access points that are out there um, and it provides a little bit more bandwidth. Um, for channel, I set it to 36. Basically just something that I randomly picked, but it is a valid channel. Um, I'll put some information in the notes for this video where you can actually look and see 
what channels are valid for your country. But um, if you're in the U.S., channel 36 is one is a good one to try. We have the passphrase, um, superstar donkeys. <laughs> so it's a little goofy, but uh, probably very hard to guess. Um, and that's basically all that I've changed for that specific configuration. Next, we will take a look at setting up routing. So in order to pass packets between two different interfaces on a Unix machine, you need to turn on forwarding in the um, actual kernel parameters. So I created a file in Etsy syscontrol D. that has this single line um, that basically turns on routing in the kernel. Um, it's uh, specifically for IPv4. Um, once this is actually set, you do need to reboot your machine because the kernel, um, in order for the kernel to basically pick up the configuration. The next thing we need to do is set up NAT which allows the, um, the Raspberry Pi to translate TCP IP connections between devices that connect to its Wi-Fi to a single IP address that's on, in my instance, the Ethernet side of the Raspberry Pi 4. So in order to do that, we use IP tables. And um, the IP tables are also set up. So if I look at, I need to do this as root, IP tables dash T nat dash S, it will show us exactly what we have here. <coughs> Excuse me. So the most important thing here is actually turning on post routing um, specifically for the tunnel interface, and that is the interface that OpenVPN creates once a VPN connection has been established. And Masquerade actually is the, um, the way that you specify that you want to use network address translation. Additionally, We have a couple of other settings that are necessary, also visible through IP tables configurations. Um, the most interesting things are to continue to allow um, any sort of internal connections within the, um, the host system, the Raspberry Pi system, and that's what this actually does. This allows us to continue to connect over the Ethernet port um, to the SSH service, which runs on TCP port number 22. And this allows us to continue to pass data across the network address translation once we've actually created a connection from the inside network, which is going to live on the Wi-Fi side, all the way back out to the, uh, the internet itself. Um, so then traffic can then pass back on those same connections as long as it's been established on the inside first. And that's basically how all um, consumer routers work is uh, with network address translation. And this line basically allows us to have uh, input from the wireless LAN and output through the tunnel. And all of those connections are accepted. So at that point, 
once you've rebooted and everything is started up, you're at the point now where we need to basically connect the open VPN tunnel. So in order to um, connect to the outside world over a VPN, you need to have already established a VPN service. Um, I have a VPN service that um, is included free with, with something else that I pay for, um, but this will work with any open VPN um, provider. And I'll also include um, in the notes a couple of um, examples uh, that people can actually use from a Raspberry Pi. But in order to do that, we will actually go and connect. So we will need to do a sudo because root needs to own this process. Um, it's the thing that enables OpenVPN process to create the tunnel interface that we're going to need. So it's going to be OpenVPN um, config and our VPN configuration files right now are located in a VPN underscore profiles directory in uh, the Pi users um, home directory. And we're going to select DFW. 001 and we will connect and now we are connecting actually we have fully connected to the VPN endpoint um, that is currently located in Dallas uh, Texas um, at this point, our tunnel interface is available, and I am going to now switch screens. Okay, I'm now connected to my 12-inch MacBook. Um, I have connected to the name of network which is the SSID that's being generated by host APD um, running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, sorry for that flicker. There's something going on with my Elgato capture device. Um, hopefully it's not too much of a bother, uh, but I do apologize for that. Um, and I use a different network than what is listed here. So this is an IF config of the wireless network on my MacBook, and you can see it's connected to 192.168.120.18. Uh, um, I'll actually SSH over the wireless network to the Raspberry Pi so I can show you. So that's going to be 120.0 on the wireless network and once again apologies for the blanking simple password and if I do an IF config on WLAN 0 you can see that it is on 192.168.120.18 can also take a look at ton zero and that is the IPsec WAN address so this is what we're going to look for um, you can just remember 36.220 we go over to Safari and we do what is my IP address the DFW connection I believe my VPN provider has um, mixed up the configuration files 
and it's an actually um, an endpoint that is in London. So this is what my geolocation looks like. Um, it shows me in London, England. Um, I'm currently sitting in Florida, so the VPN tunnel is working. Um, and it even, uh, you know, has a geolocation. Um, the performance of this connection is not the greatest, so I'll run a speed test so I can show you guys. It's definitely faster if I go on the native network. And remember, we are going across the pond and doing a round trip, so fully traversing the Atlantic Ocean. Um, that's one of the reasons why the ping is so high. But uh, 19 megabits down is actually fairly usable, and 20 plus megabits up, or at least burst up to 20 megabits, is, uh, is also quite usable. And again, for security purposes, this is absolutely fine speed. Um, if you want to do some heavy transferring of files, you may want to connect to a VPN directly, but the ease of use with this method of using a Raspberry Pi where you can connect any random device is pretty useful. Um, but that is basically it. So there we go. We've successfully set up our VPN gateway on the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions related to this content, um, please leave a comment below. I'll do my best to, uh, to get around to responding to as many comments as I possibly can, as quickly as I can. Um, and if you found this video useful, um, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, see you in the next video. Thank you.